here are the answers to the questions on the worksheet for math of chemistry for my honors students and anybody else maybe taking chemistry where you need to go beyond the New York State Regents questions with regards to um, math of chemistry so here they are pause the video if you went through all of the questions check your answers here and of course if you got them correct more than likely you don't have to watch the videos any f or this video rather any further if not all of the answers are worked out in the coming minutes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shrink this and let's bring so that that is underneath well, you know what I'm going to do let's just get rid of it okay sorry I'm having some technical difficulty alright so questions one and two whether you're asked to calculate formula mass or gram formula mass the only difference is going to be the units so here AMUs here grams per mole making sure you always get these correct you're going to list the different elements given here S and O the number of times they're given multiply by the gram formula masses off the periodic table and then add them up what made question two a little bit more difficult yeah there's more atoms but also there's a polyatomic so if you're asked to write out the uh, formula remember polyatomic ions are on reference table E with my magic little star here don't forget about reference table E let's move on questions three and four in question three you're given mass and you're going to moles and in question four you're given moles and you're going to mass the mathematical formula is on reference table T moles is equal to mass divided by gram formula mass and in order to get this correct you do need to calculate the gram formula mass here and then of course in, for ammonia here and then from there it's just the plug and chug 32 grams 142 grams per mole 0.23 moles is the answer for number three and for number four 4.7 moles and 17 grams per mole so of course I am cross multiplying here and then dividing even though it's number you know it's one and you get 80 grams for the answer for four and again 0.2343 three. these are known as one step mole problems because the word mole is given in the problem so you're either given moles or solving for moles for five and six these are also one step mole problems but now we're dealing with moles being equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd so for my class we set up a proportion one mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever it is in this case molecules of course that's always equal to one I don't have one mole I have a half a mole so I'm gonna have half the molecules and here in number six you're given molecules you're solving for moles so again you set up the proportion cross multiply and divide you could leave the answer in oops, oops sorry where am I you could leave the answer in scientific notation or I put it on the answer key as just 13 and of course what did I forget I forgot the units myself and of course it's moles let's go on okay now number seven here this is a two-step mole problem and why do I say two two-step the word mole is missing from the equation so I'm either going to go from mass to moles moles to molecules or I could go back the other way molecules to moles and then to mass so since I was given molecules here and I'm looking for mass I gotta go from molecules to moles first so here is my setup my proportion the answer is two moles 
and then I'm going to use moles is equal to mass divided by gram formula mass to get my answer of 64 grams. If I'm going through this too quickly, just pause the video, look at your work versus my work, correct your mistakes. If you're getting any of these wrong, go back and do them over again. Don't just leave it and say, yeah, 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 I got it wrong. Start from scratch, start with a new question, whether it's here on the sheet or any of the handouts and problems that we've done in class, and go through it again. For question 8, we're looking at percent of an element in this formula here. I could have asked you for all of the percentages of all the different elements, but I just picked one. The percent calculation, or I'm sorry, the percent mathematical formula is on reference table T. So percent is just part over whole. So anytime you're given the formula and you're asked the percent of the element or elements in the formula, all you have to do is calculate gram formula mass. That's your whole. That goes in the bottom. And in this case, we're looking for sulfur. That's our part. The units are going to cancel. So whether you use AMU or grams per mole, again, it's going to cancel. You divide 32 by 136 here times 100, and you get 24 percent. For number nine, this is a hydrate. And for hydrates, remember that this dot does not mean we're multiplying. All it means is the water is physically sitting in the crystalline structure. So you need the gram formula mass of the whole thing. Now I separate out. So I know here oxygen shows up twice, but the reason why I want to go ahead and calculate the seven water molecules separate because that's my part. So it turns out the seven water molecules has a mass of 126. The whole hydrate has a mass of 246. And when I set it up, I get 51%. For number 10, we are given percents here and we need to go to the empirical formula. Now remember your empirical formula is your lowest whole number ratio. There are three steps that you're following when you do these problems. Now this is supposed to be a three. It didn't do so great. It's a three steps. Percent to grams, then grams to moles, and then divide by the least number of moles. So here, are, here is the setup. You can do it all from left to right. Here are my percents. When I go to grams, why not just assume 100 gram sample? Because then I don't have to calculate anything. It's the same number. I'm just changing the units. Notice I'm dividing by the gram formula masses and I get the moles. So I picked this one on purpose. When you go ahead, you get 1.24 and 1.88. You really don't want to round right away. And in fact, remember, the third step is dividing by the least number of moles. So I got here and here. When I do that, look what happens. I get 1.5. Don't automatically round this to 2. In fact, FeO2 does not exist. Instead, we're going to go ahead and we're going to multiply through the 1 and the 1.5, and we end up with Fe2O3. For molecular formula, this is also a three-step process. You're going to find the mass of the empirical formula, divide that mass into the mass that's given. That's your formula or your gram formula mass for the actual molecule. And then you're going to get some sort of whole number, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And then you're going to go ahead and multiply the subscripts in the empirical formula by this factor. So each of the steps, here's step 1. Right, I got my mass of my empirical formula. Step two, I took the mass that was given, 42, and I divided it by the empirical formula mass. I got the factor of three, and then I went ahead here in step three and multiplied it through. So CH2 becomes C3H6. Hang in there, we're almost done. Now we're dealing with 
what's called stoichiometry problems. These are just ma math problems associated with balanced equations. The Momo problem is just a proportion. All you're doing with the balanced equation is you are looking at the coefficients and that's like your ratio or your recipe. So what I prefer is that you put the information given in the question above the reaction. So you were given 25 moles and you're looking for moles here. And then underneath is your coefficient. When there is no number we know it's 1 so it's 25 over 1 is equal to x over 2, solve for x, and it's 50 moles. So it was just a 1 to 2 ratio. With a mass mass problem, you have a little bit more work. In fact, it's really a three step problem. You're going to go from mass to moles, then mole mole ratio, just like you saw in the last question, and then moles back to mass. So in this question, 92 grams was given. We're looking for uh, the mass of water produced. You do need the gram formula masses for both the benzene and the water. And what, again, I recommend put the information given above the question. This time, besides the coefficient, you're going to put the gram formula masses. And now, once again, you have a proportion. So what's given divided by the coefficient and the gram formula mass. What's given divided by the coefficient and gram formula mass. And down here, you see the setup and the answer is 64 grams. If your teacher wants you to do it in three steps, then it's just a mass to mole problem. Right, so you're, you're using moles is equal to mass divided by gram formula mass solving for moles and then do the mole mole ratio it's a two to six ratio which is one to three and then from moles back out to mass using the same equation either way you do it you're gonna get the same answer which is 64 grams the next problem that I decided to put together this is a limiting reagent problem and the reason why I say that is you are given masses of the two reactants and it's also a mixed um, stoichiometry problem because you're given mass but you're figuring out moles of ammonia being made so <clears throat> um, what you need to do is you need to do the calculation twice so you're going to have two scenarios so the first scenario here is we're going to use the 50 grams of nitrogen assume we have excess hydrogen not just 35 and we go about solving for moles of ammonia so the nice thing about the putting the information above and information below you can mix and match so if you take a look here you got 50 grams so if you have mass above the equation you need the coefficient in front of N2 that's 1 and the gram formula mass for N2 which is 28 so that's my one half of my proportion and since you're looking for moles all you need below the equation is 2 so when you go ahead and you solve for X you get 3.6 moles you're not done you have to do it again this is the second calculation here because now you have to do the exact same thing but with 35 grams of hydrogen and excess nitrogen because since you're given masses of both you don't know which one you're going to run out of first and whatever one you run out of first that's the number of moles of ammonia that would be made so I have my 35 and then I have 3 which is the coefficient and 2 the gram formula mass and again the x over 2 I solve for x and I get 11.7 moles of ammonia that could be made if it was 35 grams of hydrogen in excess nitrogen. This number is larger than this. So what that tells me is two things. That the nitrogen gas is the limiting reagent and that 3.6 moles of ammonia would be made and then the reaction stops. 
So it's a little bit more work, but not a lot. You're still using the same setups. However, you're doing it depending on your teacher as far as, um, you know, a mass to mole stoichiometry problem. And then you're just doing it twice to figure out what's limiting, meaning what you're going to run out of first, and how much ammonia you're going to make. The last part of question 14 was calculating the percent yield. That means when you run the experiment, how much of the product, in this case ammonia, were you were making versus what we calculated on paper. So we figured out that on paper we should make 3.6 moles of ammonia, but percent yield is in mass, so we need to calculate the mass of ammonia that would have been made. So it's just the mole equation from reference table T. I plug in the moles, the 3.6 and the gram formula mass for ammonia, I get 61.2 grams. So 61.2 grams is what I calculate on paper. The student got, or, or the scientist got in the experiment, only 5.68 grams. So I just set it up. Of course, the masses cancel, and we end up with a yield of 9.3. Of course, you want to get as close to 100% as you can in the laboratory, but sometimes that just doesn't work. Okay, one more. Finally, for the bonus question for my students. This is going to go along with your test. Okay, this is going to be worth five bonus points, and that is the answer to the following question. Every year there is an international celebration of chemistry, and it is known as Mole Day. So I am looking for the time and the date that Mole Day is separated, uh, separated, listen to me, celebrated every year. So the time and the date that Mole Day is celebrated every year. So check it out online, have that information when you come in and take the test and keep working hard don't forget about castle learning go over any questions that you need to and uh, hopefully you'll get a hundred and five <laughs>